Number 19, letter A. Calculate the tension in a vertical strand of spider web if a spider of mass 8 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms hangs motionless on it. All right, so let's uh, detail a simple picture here. So let's pretend this is a spider web, and on the bottom of that, we're going to have this spider looking thing. Sure. So, um, what are the forces now acting on the spider here? Well, there's one force due to gravity, right? The weight of this spider. So one force is pulling the spider down. And that's the force due to gravity, aka the weight of the spider, which is equal to mg, the formula over here on the right-hand side. Then there is another force, right? Since the spider is hanging on it, there's another force, uh, and it's motionless, right? There's another force that's pulling it upwards then. Because otherwise, if I just had this one vector, right, it, would, it implies that there's an acceleration downward. Right? So there has to be something, and the acceleration would, that, uh, would be exactly gravity. But it says that it's motionless, so there must be an opposing force. So guess what that force is? That force is the tensional force, and that's T. Okay, so now, how do I do this? Well, it's a vertical problem, so I'm going to use the uh, force is equal to ma uh, in the y dimension. So some of the forces in the y uh, dimension will equal the mass times the acceleration in the y. Now, so let's just set it up. What are the forces in the y direction here? Well, we have the tension that's pointing up, so it's positive. Then minus, because it's pointing down, the weight of the object, or aka mg. Great, so that should equal mass times a y. Okay, so what's the tension? We don't know it. Fine. What's the mass of the spider? They told it to us. 8.00 times, times, well, there it is, 10 to the minus 5. What's gravity? 9.80. What's the mass? Again, 8.00 times 10 to the minus 5. And what's the acceleration that the spider is experiencing? Zippo, right? It's motionless. Take a look at the top. It's motionless. So that's zero. So that whole thing goes away. So that's nice. So this then simply could be, right, once I do the math here, all I got to do is multiply it and then I add it across, right? So remember, that's gone. So the tension now is, oh, it almost looks like the Amazon. Smile. <laughs> so the, but it might be backwards or no. No, I don't, eh, I don't know. I don't know. My wife gets all the deliveries, not me. So, so we have 9.80. <clears throat> times uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 5. So we have 7.84 times 10 to the negative fourth, right? And that is in newtons. So that's the tensional force. All right, not bad. Now let's take a look at letter B. So let me draw B over here and let's take a read. So now it says letter B. Calculate the tension in a horizontal strand of spiderweb if the same spiderweb sits motionless in the middle of it, much like the tightrope walker in figure 4.17. The strand sags at an angle of 12 degrees below the horizontal. Compare it with the tension in the vertical strand. So here's the figure uh, 4.17. So basically it's the same picture. Okay, the only difference is that instead of uh, Johnny Boy standing on the rope, we have a spider here. Okay, but the picture is going to less be the same, and then the angle is different, right? Instead of 5 degrees, they told us it would be below the horizontal by 12 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detail the free body diagram around this point. All right, so let's draw the axes. Now the center here, remember, the center here will represent the point that I circled up there. Okay, so what are the, what are the tensions, what are the forces? Well, again, the spiders on the on the uh, spider web, right? So there's still the weight of the spider in the middle of the rope pointing straight down. So that hasn't changed, okay? So that's still the weight of the spider and that's equal to mg. Now though, the, uh, the string has changed, right, in direction. There is no exactly opposite vertical force here. Instead, the forces are now distributed to the left and to the right-hand side. So in other words, I have a Tensional force pointing in that direction. That has to be pointing up, right, in the positive y direction somewhat because, again, there's no acceleration. This thing is motionless, so something must be canceling the downward force here. Okay? And then there's another same vector on the other side. Okay? And they told us it sits 12 degrees below the horizontal. They might be saying, well, wait a minute. That looks like 12 degrees above, Andrew. So... Why is, it, why is it there? Did you make a mistake? I didn't make a mistake 
because you have to think about it. Just look, take, take a look at this picture, right? If I were to draw my coordinates there, what would it look like? My coordinates would look like this, right down the middle, and then right over here, right? There it is. Now here, the angle of interest is this angle, okay? And if you notice, right, if I have this line is parallel, right, remember a little geometry, right, I have two parallel lines here. What's that, alternate interior angles or whatever it was? Right, so whatever this angle is in here below the horizontal would be the same as the angle in here above the horizontal. Okay, so that should hopefully make sense. So now, what do we have to do? Well, again, we have to then take a look at the force formulas, okay? So I know, I mean, I don't really have to go through it, but, um, oh, let me just label this too. This is the tension, and this is tension. I don't know what they are, though, right? So um, let's think about this. The X components, right, of these two tensions, meaning uh, this X component right here, of the tension, let me draw it a little longer, right? And the X component of that tension will cancel. Why? Because it's the same tensional force. They're both T, we got the same angle, right? So they're the same triangle, basically, all right? So I'm not even gonna bother calculating the Xs. You guys should see that it's definitely gonna cancel. But what I am interested in and what, they're, uh, what we'll add together is the Y components here, right? So for example, the Y component of the triangle on the left let me draw it a little straighter, would be that, right? This is the Y. This is the tension in the Y direction. Same thing on the right-hand side, right? That line now, that arrow, in terms of the Y vector, that's the tension in the Y direction of the second tension vector, okay? So remember, we have to be consistent, all right? We can only talk about X and Y frames here when we're adding things up. So since the weight, we have a pure weight in the Y dimension, that has to be balanced by a pure Y uh, force in the uh, upward direction in the y uh, coordinate. All right, so I'm dealing with y, so some of the forces in the y direction is equal to may. Okay, again, there's no acceleration, so we can kind of skip this whole step, so that should just go to zero, right? So we have the sum of the forces in the y direction will equal zero. So what are the forces in the y direction? Well, how do I, so let me write this. So it's going to be tension in the y direction, right? Uh, what do we get here? Plus, sorry, plus, ten, uh, plus tension in the y uh, dimension on the second triangle, right? Should equal, uh, well, not equal yet, minus then, right, let me set it up. So minus then the weight, right? Because that's the force pointing down or mg. And that whole thing is now equal to zero, right? Because that, so these were the forces. These are the three forces going on, okay? So what I want to do though, now I can, uh, I can do this uh, how, I, how I'm setting it up, but it probably would be better and easier if at this stage, remember, what we're trying to find is the tension, not the tension in the y direction, but the tension overall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little trigonometry here to find the tension. How do I do that? Well, look at, this, look at the pieces of the triangle you know. You know this angle? You're talking about the opposite side in the hypotenuse, so we're dealing with sine here, right? So watch what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 12 is equal to the opposite side, which is the tension in the y direction divided by the overall tension. Now solve this thing for t. Basically just switch the numerator and the denominator there. So t is equal to, well no, excuse me, let me solve it for I have to solve it for ty. Apologize. Solve this for ty because that's the variable in my formula. So simply just cross multiply the t on up. So we get t sine of 12 is equal to ty. Now what you can do is take this and plug it on in. Okay, in both places. Because they're both going to be the same in terms of the triangles. So now what we have here is now we're going to have t, right, sine of 12 plus, oops, plus t sine of 12 is equal to, move the mg on over now, because again, I want to solve for t is equal to mg. All right, now I can add, so now I can start adding stuff together, right? So take the, take this, do the sine of 12. So sine of 12, that works out to be 0 0.208, right? And then since there's two of them, you got to add them together. So take 0.208 and add 0.208 uh, together. 
So we get 0 0.416. So this works out to be 0 0.416 T is equal to the mass of the spider, which was 8.00 times 10 to the minus 5 times gravity, which was which is 9.80. All right, now simply just divide out now the 0.416. Sorry guys, I'm running out of space. Divide out the 0 0.416. And I'm gonna write the tensional tension here, okay? So the tension here now is eight times 10 to the minus five times 9.8 divided by 0.416. And we get a value now of, and I will convert this into scientific notation. So 1.8, 1.88 times 10 to the one, two, three, times 10 to the minus three, and that's in Newtons, okay? So that is the tension now in that particular case. And now what they wanted us to do is compare this, right? Compare this value that we just found here uh, with the tension in the vertical strand, meaning find their ratio. So why don't I do, why don't I call this T1, right, for the first part, or TA for the first part of the problem, and this is TB for part B. So if I then take TA, or let me do TB over TA, because that's really what they're asking, right? That would simply be 7.84, and <laughs> I'm writing it down right, but I'm not copying. Okay, meaning I'm not just copying it from here appropriately over to there. All right, 1.88 times 10 to the minus 3 over uh, 7.84 times 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 4. So what do we get here, guys? 1.88 times 10 to the minus 3. Hold on. 1.88 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 7.84 times 10 to the minus 4. And we get a value of about 2.4, okay? So 2.4. So that's really 2.4 over 1. In other words, in other words, the tension found in part B, because that's the numerator value, is 2.4 times larger than the tension found in part A. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. That would be great. And I thank you very much for uh, watching our videos. It definitely means a lot to us. And um, tell your friends about it. Maybe we can, you know, help them if they're in a similar class. We're also putting out some chemistry videos and we've got a lot of other stuff coming out. All right. So thank you guys so much again. And I uh, look forward to teaching you in the next lesson.